So in this video, we're going to talk about SciPy, uh, which is the scientific toolkit module for Python. Uh, it's sort of ubiquitous or standardized at this point. So this is where uh, it works closely with NumPy, which we talked about in the last uh, lecture. So of course, NumPy gives you all the data structures, uh, arrays, contiguous arrays, matrices, and operations on them, like vector matrix dot products and uh, matrix matrix multiplies. Uh, or, I'm sorry, uh, vector vector multiplies, things like that. So, um, Sci SciPy is basically fully operational with num NumPy. You can send in any NumPy array or data structure to most SciPy functions and it will operate them on the way that you expect. So, SciPy is what gives you all of the solvers and other features that you're used to in MATLAB, like root finding algorithms, optimization routines, filtering, things like that. So, uh, you know, basically this repeat, you know, reproduces what I just said. It's a collection of the mathematical algorithms and convenience functions built on top of NumPy. Um, it's organized into multiple sub-packages. We'll look at a few of those. There's no way I could cover all of them. And really, with, um, in combination with NumPy, NumPy and SciPy together, reproduce all of the sort of computational ability of MATLAB itself. Um, you know, that's, that's not strictly true, but I would say in general, uh, between NumPy and SciPy, you can do any type of computations that you regularly do in MATLAB. So a few of the sub-modules, there, there are more uh, that I haven't listed here, um, but uh, just a few if we go through them. So um, the, the SciPy special sub-modules, so these were all your special functions like Bessel functions and Chebyshev functions and things like that would reside. Into SciPy integrate, this is your numerical integration routines. Uh, so your numerical quadrature and other initial value um, initial value problem and some boundary value problem routines solutions are there. Um, SciPy optimize, this is your minimization routines. Um, you know, nonlinear least squares, uh, Levenberg Markov algorithms, things like that can all be found in there. Interpolate is just what it sounds like. So this is a, you know, interpolating functions and other things, Fourier transforms and FFT pack. Uh, signal processing, uh, this is where you have your filtering routines. So your uh, discrete filters, Chebyshev filters, uh, things like that. Linear algebra, so this is a package where you have solvers. And in some ways, it reproduces some of the solver f uh, facilities in, in NumPy uh, itself. However, this also includes solvers for sparse matrices. And you can get some advantage by using sparse data structures, of course. And, and so then there's also this uh, SciPy sparse package that includes uh, graphing and solvers and other things like that. Uh, there's a SciPy stats package, um, image processing package, uh, some file I.O. Um, this is not you know, you know, writing text files. These are for writing. Uh, sort of binary database type files like NetCDF or some of the common uh, scientific data storage formats will be found in there, readers and writers for that kind of stuff. Uh, Weave is a utility that's built into Python that allows you to um, write C++ functions and you can sort of write the code right in, the, in line with the rest of it and then on execution it'll be compiled into a compiled library and then you can call it from that. Um, there are other packages that are sort of more modern for this, and we'll talk about some of them if we have time, notably C-types and SWIG, and uh, more recently one called CFFI, which can be quite useful for that kind of thing. So this is very useful for speeding up your code. Um, you know, a lot of times we write pure Python code, and we can speed it up uh, by vectorize operations in NumPy, um, but if it's still not fast enough, then we can resort to profiling our code to see exactly where it's slow, and then we can write, uh, rewrite that part of the code in C or C++ or some other language, and then we can use some library to help us call those compiled, uh, that compiled code that we wrote in C or Fortran or C++ uh, from uh, Python itself. So we'll look at a couple of examples here. I mean, there's just no way I can cover all of it. You're going to have to resort to the documentation for that and the many sort of online resources. Much like you could teach a whole class in Python, you can 
you could teach a whole class on sort of the NumPy, um, SciPy algorithms uh, within within this guy. So, um, you know, if you want to do numerical integration, in this case, integrate a function. Um, so this the first argument to this quadrature um, method is actually uh, a lambda function. So uh, we talked about lambda functions and we talked about function definitions, but basically this is just a way to inline, uh, and in this case, in the argument list itself, define a function. Right? So in this case, the function is just x squared, and we're going to integrate from 0 to 4, uh, and this returns a, a numerical integration. So uh, it also returns the error. Of course, there, there's some round off, uh, ultimately. So uh, this returns um, the answer itself and some estimation of the error. So in this case, the, you know, the exact answer would be like 21 and a third. So it's a very, very close, obviously. Um, it might seem clunky to always have to write this, uh, you know, import SciPy integrate uh, before you use one of these. And of course, you only have to do this once in a, in a uh, script, in a Python script. There's a very good reason for that. I mean, you know, there's a lot of functionality in SciPy, and so you don't want to bring all of the methods into the namespace or into the code uh, every time. There's just a, a lot of unnecessary overhead. Uh, you also might, as we've learned with object-oriented program, you might have want to have, you know, uh, common function names like integrate that operate differently on different sets of data. Of course, so this is why, and it's a very good reason why you, you, you know, it, it's used, it's useful to use these namespaces uh, like they do. Uh, it's pretty common in, in Python. So there are many other functions: uh, double quad for compute, double quad and triple quad for computing double and and uh, triple integrals, of course, the fixed quadrature, trapezoid rule, and Simpson's rule for computing, you know, uh, discrete integrals. So here's an example of the SciPy linear algebra package, and kind of not doing anything very interesting here, but uh, basically I import NumPy just to generate the random numbers, and then, uh, you know, basically a random matrix, three by three, and then Thankfully, that matrix isn't singular, which it's unlikely would be if it was just a set of random numbers. Uh, so that then I can take the inverse of that. And of course, this is the output here. Um, also, likewise, I can then take the eigenvalues of that. In this case, they're complex eigenvalues. And so the, the linear algebra package within SciPy is useful for those kind of operations and other linear algebra stuff. So here's an example of uh, using SciPy interpolate. So in this case, um, we have uh, basically a set of values, x and y. x are going to go from minus 1 to 11 in steps of 1. And then y is going to be evaluated at those locations. It's just an exponential function of minus those values divided by 3. Um, and of course, these are NumPy operations. We know how those work. Um, we've in in interpolated, uh, I mean, we've imported uh, a couple of functions from SciPy uh, or, or namespaces, mainly interpolate and integrate. And so from interpolate, then we're going to integrate in, in one dimension this data, x and y, and that's going to, that's going to produce a function. So th this is actually a, a function object, uh, sort of like a lambda function, meaning that we can actually call it at given values. And so uh, in the absence of being able to plot that function, because we haven't talked about plotting yet, and that's what we'll talk about in the next, in the next lecture, um, you know, one way to compare, uh, you know, the, the interpolated function to the original data is to integrate both of them over some region. Um, by no means, just because the integrals are close doesn't mean that the functions are necessarily close, but that's one way, sort of in the absence of plotting that, that we can do this. So, uh, so that's what we'll do. You know, the first one will actually call the quadrature integrate function that we already talked about. We're going to integrate over 0 to 10, and we'll look at the answer here is 2.9, roughly. Um, and of course, then, if we actually use Simpson's rule to integrate the data over that same region, then we have something that's you know also rounds to 2.9. So you can see that the two integrals are in agreement, and therefore, you know at least for now we'll make the claim that f is a good interpolation of of the of this data. Okay, so that's another module. So again, uh, we just went over just a few examples, and you know basically what I want you to take out of this because there's just no way I can talk about every function that's implemented in SciPy. But what I want you to remember is that essentially if there's a way you can do it in MATLAB, it's very likely that you can do it in NumPy and SciPy. 
And so basically, between the two, we have re, you know you have a free alternative to MATLAB. Uh, I don't want to you know again, don't don't hold me to that strictly. I'm sure that there's some functionality in MATLAB that's not available in, in this software suite. But for the most part, the vast majority of common things that you would do uh, are going to be available. In addition to that, you get the full power of the Python language, things we've already talked about, object-oriented programming, which is really not available in MATLAB. Only in recent releases have they added some object-oriented uh, functionality, but it's not, it's not complete. It's not uh, it's not what Python is in the sense that from the very beginning Python was intended to be an object-oriented language. Um, of course, you can also do procedural procedural stuff, which is you know, exactly imperative programming that you would do in Python in MATLAB. So you can still have that type of programming um, if you'd like to do that. And there are also some functional, you know, there is a Lambda function implementation. So if you're familiar with functional languages like Lisp, uh, these are key ingredients in that. Uh, essentially, you you, you create lists and then you have functions that operate on those lists and so you can almost do some type of functional programming as well. Um, you know there's more reasons to come we're going to talk about MATLAB like pl plotting and other plotting packages. Um, in the next lecture we I mentioned briefly the ability to call C++ and Fortran code directly from um, Python. This is, makes it a really attractive feature because again you can just profile your code figure out where it's slow and re-implement that those areas of the code in, in you know, compiled languages uh, to get great speed up. And another great thing is that you can do MPI. You know, MPI stands for Message Passing Interface, and it is the de facto standard for distributed memory parallel computing. And um, you can actually do this style of programming, parallel programming, uh, within Python, and, and that's for sure uh, you cannot do uh, from MATLAB, uh, certainly not for free in, in any way. Uh, and so if you have any interest in this, you should probably look into my graduate course, which, which I'll be teaching.